Hi you guys, I am here on video. Can you believe it? I have said I was going to do this for many months, okay, probably many years, but usually record these videos, never post them, end up just doing a blog post anyway, but here I am. We have our eye connection. This is going to happen. <laughs> this is going to be a regular thing. Monthly favorites will now be in video format and I'm so excited about it. I turned 30 this month, which feels like a huge, exciting feat. And now that I'm in my 30s, I'm going to do things that scare me that I really enjoy. I mean, video content's my very favorite. It's a thing I like to consume most. I feel most connected through video content. I love watching YouTube videos. I love watching monthly favorite videos. So this is the decade, but I guess the year where I produce the content that I most enjoy. So, at least monthly favorites will always be a video from here on out, and I'm so excited. So this is my February favorites. Again, I turned 30 this month. I traveled to Scottsdale on a surprise birthday trip this month, which was phenomenal. Um, we survived flu apocalypse this month, where my husband asked him to go, and both kids were sick for like 10 days. That was not fun. Um, and then I didn't do a favorites video last month because I had done my 2019 favorites. So these even have some favorites from January when we were at the lake house in Canada. So yeah, there's a lot to jump into. So let's just go ahead and get started. So I wanna always start with like the skin beauty section, although it's very limited for me <laughs> in this house. Um, especially last month because I hardly ever wear makeup. At the lake house, I don't ever wear makeup. On my trip with my sisters for my birthday, we wore makeup maybe once or twice. And then when your kids are sick, I can't, I was lucky I showered. So makeup was not a regular um, part of my routine in the past couple months, but I still will almost always wear this Dew Skin by Beauty Counter. So I switched to wearing fully non-toxic, chemical-free makeup almost two years ago. And the hardest part probably was trying to cover my rosacea prone skin and my skin's really dry. I'm mixed and I have a yellow undertone so it's really hard to match. And I was really loyal to my old face routine. This has trumped everything. I love it, it's very lightweight. It's what I'm wearing right now. So it's super sheer, it's not heavy at all, and it kind of morphs. So I got a tan in Scottsdale, and it works. And I was pale as ever in uh, the lake house, and it worked then too. So it's just that kind of skin perfecter that makes my skin feel hydrated without looking like I'm wearing a ton of makeup, because I usually don't wear anything else with it. So if you're looking to make even one change towards like a natural skincare or natural makeup, this will be your best friend. And it has SPF 20. It's just the best all the way across the board. I don't know if I can even count this as skincare because it's technically a hand cream and an empty oil, but we're just going to go with it. So I got this RMS Beauty Oil two years ago when I was just kind of dipping my toe into natural skincare. I love RMS products. I thought this would be perfect. It did not work for my face. It was a little bit too thick and too heavy and things felt a little bit too clogged and shiny. So I set it aside. I was like, this was pricey, it was an investment, I'm never gonna part with you, but we'll reunite later. It's not working right now. But now that I'm pregnant, this has become my belly oil. It's probably the most bougie belly oil you could ever use because it was pricey. It's phenomenal, the best clean product. It smells like heaven. Um, but I wasn't going to use it on my face and I needed something in my arsenal to use for this belly. This is my third pregnancy. The jig is up. I already have a ton of stretch marks, but I'm not trying to get a million more, you know, and the ones I have, I don't want them to just get like deeper and craggier. So I mix this RMS Beauty Oil with this Walita, Walita, one of those skin food, which I talk about all the time. This is my hand cream, but you can use it on anything. People use it for like their elbows if they're really dry, their knees if they're really dry. I just cannot get enough of this. It's also fully non-toxic and clean. So at night, I mix them both together and make kind of like 
a putty in my hands and lather my belly up like I'm greasing can you see my belly hanging out I hope not um, like I'm greasing up a pan to make cornbread or something like lather that up and it's also my time kind of with the baby I think for this being my third pregnancy I don't have enough time in the days I usually did in my last pregnancies to just like ooh and ah over my belly and sit and just like rub it and sing it's not like the most common occurrence so that's my time with the baby and I just talk sweetly and sometimes play music so that's been really sweet I'm not saying you need to run out and get this just for your pregnancy but it will it will change your life can I say that the smell of this alone at least go somewhere and smell this this is Oshimigo's favorite smell. It's like in our house now, it triggers, this scent triggers bedtime. It's like, oh, it's time to sleep. It just smells so good. I've never smelled anything like it. So highly recommend trying out these guys. And then while we're on the topic of sleep, this eye mask is such a game changer. It's filled with lavender. And I'm not even really a lavender person. I don't like lavender soaps. I don't like lavender scented like detergents or anything like that. But this filled with actual lavender is just heavenly. It smells so good. And I've been not been sleeping very great pregnant. I don't know who sleeps very great pregnant, but falling asleep is the hardest part because my mind is racing with to-do lists, even though I've been exhausted all day. Like I count down the seconds to bedtime all day. And yet when I get in bed, all of the things I should be doing, could be doing, wish I could be doing, come in my mind, can't get comfortable, can't fall asleep. So this eye mask also is another one of those like scent trigger things where I'm like, put this on my eyes and it just hangs right over my nose. And it's like, oh yeah, it's time, shut it down. It's sleep time. Falling asleep has gotten significantly easier, easier and I can't say it will change how you actually sleep through the night but falling asleep this makes a big difference and Oshimago will every single night no matter what do his like neck exercises and some yoga stuff right here and I'll just be sitting there like waiting to turn the lamp off and have like peace and quiet so this will knock me out whether he's doing his yoga stuff over here or not so this is really good you don't need to get this exact one but I would recommend something filled with lavender because wow this is a treat okay I guess I have one more thing for sleep I don't know if you can see behind me that pillow the creamy colored pillow is my pregnancy pillow and I love it so much it's it's not one of those like what are they called snoogle snuggle I don't know those ones that curve and they're huge and bulky and they take up your whole bed and they look like a giant clothespin. No, I did not like those. I had that with Oshalama and I just felt like, get off of me, like something on my back and front and just, just too much. It's one singular pillow and it looks just like a body pillow on the bed. So I'll probably sleep with it forever, <laughs> to be honest. But I love that it's not a giant cylinder. It's more flat, like an actual pillow, just elongated. So I can put it between my legs and then wrap my foot over it and it still doesn't take up the whole bed. So that has been wonderful. That actually has made a huge difference for my sleep through the night. No, it's not magic, unfortunately. I'm still waking up a ton through the night, but it does make me feel so much more comfortable. And I have herniated discs in my back, all this hip stuff going on. My belly weighs a million pounds. It's just so supportive. And a couple friends recommended it to me. so. I'm giving that gift to you. It'll be in the description box. Click that link, try it out. It's another investment. I don't know why these pillows are so expensive, you guys. I don't know. I wish I wish I could find an option that was like $5 that felt like that, but I couldn't. And I will say I'll use it forever. So it's totally worth the investment. Okay, the next segment I'm gonna talk about is food, food related stuff, because who would I be if I didn't, right? So this cookbook, The Defined Dish, is so good. I've recommended it to everybody. And as you can see, I don't mess around with my cookbooks. They're not for show. They're not like pretty to put in the corner. These cookbooks go to work for me. I immediately put tabs all over them and will save recipes that I want to try. And then 
when I weekly meal prep, I'll go through and put a pink one on top to say which one I'm making that week. So, no, that's not correct. This salad I'm making this week. So, get the tab on top. And so I followed Alex Snodgrass for years because she cooks food that I feel like is for me. I have a very restricted diet. If you're new here and you don't know, let me just break it down for you. I have Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune disease. And that means for the past two years, I have cut out of my diet gluten, dairy, soy, all grains, so like oats and quinoa and rice, did I say corn already, and all legumes, so beans and peanuts and all that stuff. I don't eat refined sugars, I don't eat a lot of those oils like canola oils or soybean oils, all that stuff. Things can get really limited and feel really sad, but thankfully over the past couple years I've done a ton of research and I was so happy to discover the Define Dish. Um, she had a blog before this cookbook and I just devoured that blog because the recipes don't feel sad, <laughs> they don't feel like you're missing out, they just feel like the best version of any recipe out there. So I've been telling every single person I know, whether they have food restrictions or not, just give it a try. She has recipes for kids in there, um, she has fun date night recipes in here, so also get the cookbook but dig through the blog. It's a wealth. She has a wealth of knowledge on the subject of just clean eating, Whole30, clean recipes. And also you can just, it's like a gold mine, especially if you're like me and you can feel tapped out on finding recipes that feel fun and exciting. It is like a gold mine, truthfully. So highly recommend this cookbook. The next food item I wanna talk about are stasher bags. So I, Again, because I have an autoimmune disease, it's very important that I don't come in contact with plastics and um, just toxic chemicals and things like that. So I used to use Ziploc bags for everything. And for the past couple years, I've been replacing them slowly but surely with stasher bags. And we probably have 10, maybe eight or 10 by now. And they really are so simple. You just stick them in the dishwasher. You don't even have to turn them inside out. And they are an investment. I mean, I want to say these small guys are like $9. But when they're all you use and you use them all the time, they're so worth the investment, especially to not be wasting so much plastic. And for me, coming in contact with plastic. Um, I also will say I tried a different brand, like an off-brand stasher bag. And my husband was like, what is this? Like He was like, it's falling apart not this it's falling apart it does not you put it in the dishwasher and it's destroyed you use it once it's stained so these are worth every single penny and I can't recommend them enough oh one more fun thing there's so many colors to choose from and so for the kids it gets exciting when they open their lunch they have their favorite colors at their stasher bags a shimmer I pretty much stick to the neutral ones you guys there's chips in here this is me being real this was my chip bag the other day. <laughs> so as someone who can't just go somewhere and know that there's guaranteed gonna be food for me, I always have snacks on me and this just enables me to not have a bunch of plastic baggies on me. I will not go anywhere without a snack, which means I don't go anywhere without these guys. Okay, this might feel a little excessive, a little bit dramatic, but bear with me. I am recommending two hydro flasks. I'm sorry to do it, but I have to. So this one I've had for a really long time and I use it for water. If you have not tried a hydro flask, run. Run to the link below in the description box and try this out. You will be shocked at how, you know, a lot of things say like it'll stay cold for 12 hours and they're lying. Hydro flask does not lie. I will put ice cubes in a hydro flask and 12 hours later, still have freezing cold ice. No, freezing cold water. And that matters to me, especially pregnant. I don't know why, I don't know if anyone else is like this, but me drinking water while pregnant, I am picky, a little bit bougie. If my water's warm, I'm like, I don't want that. No, I can't drink that. Same with my smoothies, which brings me to this one. So 
I was using this for water, but if I had to take a smoothie on the go, because I have one every single day, I was putting it in here. But then I'd be without water, and then I have to rinse it out, and it's all like gunky smoothie. So I finally, finally got the smaller size for smoothies, and it's been a game changer. Because I can make, I make one every single morning. I gave one to a Shimago too, so we both are off with our smoothies every single day. This is the 24 ounce, and I find it the perfect size for a smoothie or a protein shake. Because again, if I have like a warm, lukewarm, juicy textured smoothie, what's the point? I don't wanna drink that, <laughs> that's gross. I can't even convince myself, no. It has to be ice cold, so I can have, make a smoothie first thing in the morning, take the kids to school, do my errands, and still have this for lunch, or have this late morning, and it's still ice cold, like it's just out of the blender. It's like magic. So these two I highly recommend. This one doesn't fit in your cup holder in the car. I will say that. This one does. This is the 40 ounce. But I, especially pregnant, I have to have a visual of knowing I'm drinking enough water. And so if I know I've drank, in, I drank two or three of these, then I'm golden. I feel good about that. Um, if I just drink a cup of water here and like a sparkling water there, I don't know what I've actually consumed. And it's important for me to know I'm really hydrated while well, pregnant, but always. So I need the bigger one. I don't mind that it doesn't fit in the cup holder. I can deal with that, but that's important to you. The 24 ounce is perfect. Next is this book. This book is intense. So it's not one of those books to read if you um, just want to like learn more about using your phone less, or if you have an idea like maybe one day I'd like to use my phone less. This book, How to Break Up With Your Phone, is for like in your face this second confronting you with your phone addiction <laughs> and you will not be able to put this down without making a change in your life so I would caution you unless you really want to make a change in your life do not read this book um, I it was recommended to me by my friend Laura Whiffler who is half of the Risen Motherhood team and I was telling her I was like I have consumed a ton of content I'm using my phone less podcasts and books and articles and all of that and they've all been super informative and helpful but none of them have actually like lit a fire under me and reset my brain to feel the weight and the importance of being on my phone less being on social media less you breaking that addiction those tendencies like why am i reaching for my phone right now this is an incredible read and it's really hard to put down too so just set aside some time get yourself in your brain space, maybe have like a little phone binge for one day before and then dive in because it's going to change your life. So this feels like the perfect time to talk about this, which is my new Apple Watch. Now, I'm not saying in order to use your phone less, you need to go get an Apple Watch. That'd be ridiculous. But if you have been thinking about getting an Apple Watch or you do already have an Apple Watch, this has been so helpful for me because one of my biggest reasons for feeling like I needed to have my phone on me at all times was, okay, what if someone texts me and I miss that? Or what if someone calls or I'm waiting on a phone call? Knowing I have my Apple Watch to update me on those things without having to have my phone in graphs, which often leads to just like scrolling social media on a whim, that's been so helpful. So I got this the other day. I got the chain, the rose gold kind of like chain link looking one because I want it to look like a real watch. I'll link everything in the description box, but this has been so wonderful. And I had one, I think five years ago, but it became essentially a paperweight. And I remembered, I'm like, I miss that. I miss not, hope you can't hear the sirens. Um, I miss being able to put my phone in a drawer and not still thinking about it. like. Is a shimmer on his way home? Did someone text me? So that's the reason I felt for my 30th birthday, I gifted myself the Apple Watch to kind of start introducing that again. Less phone, still feel connected. Um, so yeah, you don't have to get an Apple Watch again. That's a very expensive solution to being on your phone less. It's free to be on your phone less, but this has been really helpful for me. Okay, you guys, two more things. Bear with me. I have enormous feet. 
These are my feet. These are not my husband's shoes. These are mine. Um, I am six feet tall and a lot of girls I know on my, you know, who are my volleyball team that were six, three or taller than me still wore a size nine or 10. No, the Lord saw fit that I had shoebox size feet and it's fine. I'm cool with it. So these are the men's version and we're going to get something out of the way really quickly. This is the brand. Some people say Veja, some people say Veja, and some people say Veja. Just pick whichever one sounds best to you. I'm not even going to attempt it. But this is the brand. And I am fully loyal to this brand. I saw for a long time, um, I saw these everywhere. And I was like, mm, that's a big investment for a sneaker. I have a lot of sneakers that I love and wear all the time. But I finally took the plunge last year and I've worn them nonstop. I have two pairs. I have one that um, is plain with lace-ups and then these Velcro ones. These Velcro ones are super cool looking and they finish every outfit, go with everything. And if you're a person who wears a mama form, like me, a uniform as a mom, these are in my mama form 100% of the time. So I need to give a disclaimer because no disclaimer was given to me and I almost, almost returned these, which would have been tragic because they're my favorite shoe I own. This right here, this tongue and this back feel like they are out for blood the first time you wear them. I was truly offended. I was like, how are all these people pretending these are comfortable? How are all these people saying they wear them every day and they're so comfortable? It was brutal brutal I was offended and then I was like you know what I'm gonna give it a chance and I will say after two wears these feel like butter like they're the more most comfortable shoe I would not wear them if they weren't comfortable I would not have kept them if they weren't comfortable they're a shoe I wear like twice a week and I have quite a lot of shoes so they've held that spot for like six months now but especially in January and February when I wanted to pretend that me wearing sweats every day was like an intentional outfit. So if you haven't given these a try, just do it. Maybe do it on Nordstrom where you can return it if you don't love them as much as you thought. They definitely are an investment, but they'll be so worth it. And if you do take the plunge, I want you to tell me and say, you were right. They hurt so badly the first time and I wanted to return them too but now I wear them every day and I will say you're welcome okay guys we made it to the last thing this bag I believe how you say it's Dagny Dover this bag got so many questions over the past couple months because we were traveling we were at the lake house I was on my trip in Scottsdale and this is what I brought and so many people said okay I either want to get that for my husband or I want to get that for me and I kind of did both because I gave it to Oshima Go um, for his birthday last summer. But who do you think has used it the most? Um, we just emptied it out because he was on his business trip last week and he took this. And it's just the perfect size. This is the extra large. It's a nylon bag. It's a weekender. Um, but the interior compartments, I love that there's a giant one on this side. There's so many zipper mesh compartments. There's a ton of Velcroed off compartments on the side and the interior, the actual middle contains, you can put anything in there. I just took it on my trip and had a DSLR, all of my snacks, which is a lot, um, my toiletries, my undergarments, everything. Everything was in this bag and it still comfortably fit under the seat in front of me. It can fit in the overhead. It's just perfect. I wanted to get the large at first. Um, but the large I find is the size of my tote bags. So there's kind of no point in having tote bags and then a nylon tote bag. So I wanted to go the size up to be able to fit everything I needed without kind of straining or having stuff sticking out the top. I love that I can zipper it off. Um, and it's beautiful. It really is. So the extra large weekender, again, everything that I talk about will be linked below, but this is such a great gift for your husband, gift for yourself, gift for your dad in this color, but they have a million colors. So if you're just like, I need a weekender, grab that thing. We share this. I love this color, I wear it all the time. So that is my last item, we did it. 
Okay, guys, that's it. We made it to the end of my first monthly favorites video, and I'm a little bit giddy, mostly because I told you guys on Instagram yesterday I'd be filming this video today and had such great feedback, and I'm just so excited to be starting this new journey. So thanks for bearing with me. I, you guys, the audio is probably a little dicey. Um, focus might be a little bit dicey. We're gonna get better, okay? So just stick with me, you and me together. Hang in there, we're gonna work on this. <laughs> and I hope that you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you guys back here next month.